Well, Ross, thanks for joining us. Was that a point gained? Um, I think in the way that the game panned out, yes. Um, in how I felt at half time, albeit we wasn't a rip roaring first half for anybody to really enjoy, I felt we were in a position to build and, and go on and win the game. So I'm extremely disappointed with um, parts of our performance today, and then at the same time, even more disappointed in the goals that we gave away. But um, what I had to do there at the lads there, he said to him about um, credit where it's due, put the bodies on the line today in terms of um, the state that some of them were in and also um, the fact that we've got match winners in our team that can give us the opportunity to, to get points out of games when, um, when perhaps we're not at our best. As we know that last week there were a number of people at the uh, club that weren't well. How many players and staff weren't available today? I think first and foremost it's important to let everyone know that there's no COVID symptoms so that's certainly something that we're um, now that we're, we're fully aware of and obviously got our eyes on. But I had nine players on my list today, um, this morning even, that um, were vulnerable and that I needed to um, wait really to pick my team. I went in yesterday morning and, and had the, the team selected that I was going to work on in training for today and uh, had to rip that piece of paper up at about quarter to ten because we had so many, uh, so many illnesses. So on that behalf, um, I think the boys deserve a huge amount of credit for the commitment that they've made. I would also add to that the honesty that some of them have had. You know, as a professional footballer, you find yourself in the team to actually um, accept that you're not well enough and not capable enough on the day is, uh, is something that I asked for yesterday. So uh, I have to give the boys a lot of credit for that in terms of their uh, their honesty and all enable to me to enable me, sorry, to pick a team to, to go out and get a result. And it was against a good and well-organised Mansfield Town side, but you'll be disappointed with the manner in which the goals were conceded. Yes, because it's things that we spoke about, we speak about. Um, we have to respect the, the, the league, the level, the, the, sometimes the way that other teams operate and full respect to the way they go about it. It's not for me to talk about anything like that, but it, it's more we knew that they were going to put the ball forward, they were going to work hard, they were going to run us down, they were going to head it and clear it and you know, and, and, uh, and, and put a little bit of pressure on us in that manner. Uh, and I was very disappointed in the fact that, you know, uh, the way that Brove gave the penalty away and then the fact that we didn't mark well enough in the box to, for the second goal gave us a huge mountain to climb. But James Brophy made amends. Yes, um, and that's the character this group's got and the players in this group have got. Um, and I'm, and I'm pl proud and pleased that, that Brove showed the resilience to, to step up and, and come back from that. I think at the same time as well, um, it's all, also really important to um, pat the boys on the back for the fact that we've got match winners in our team and we know that even if we're not at our best, which I don't believe we have been yet, um, we've still got pe people in our team that are capable of opening a door and, and getting us a point or a goal. Goals to chance ratio for Dan Johnson, exceptional. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's incredible, the, the rich vein of form that he's on going into the back end of, of last season. Um, he's very unassuming character, Dave. Uh, he's not the one that you hear in the dressing room. He goes about his business, he's very professional. All things that, when we were doing our research on, on Danny, we knew we were going to get with him, that he was a very, very good professional. And he was a goal scorer, so um, I don't think anybody quite thought that he was going to go on a, on a run of form in which that he, he has. But uh, we're delighted with the fact that when we ball goes in the box, we know that even if again we're not we're not performing or we're not flying on the day, that we've got people that can put the ball in the goal. And deep into stoppage time, you could understand why there was so much interest in late night champ striker Ruel Santoro. Yes, and I think we're seeing Ruel um, in his. Um, with all these qualities and, and the strengths that he's got because uh, the last two games, I think like I said to you previously, we have to be patient to get Ruel fully up to scratch and see him uh, imposing himself on games for longer periods and at his very, very best. And, and I think t today without being um, without being slick, and clean and tidy and, and, and put, putting in the performance that we wanted as a team, Ruel epitomised that uh, endless work ethic and work rate and attitude that um, they've got us a point. Remember Justin saying they're not substitutes, Dave. They're game changers, and the substitutes changed the game today, didn't they? Yes. Um, when I nearly went for three all at once, and I thought, no, no, rein yourself in, be patient, um, because I felt that we uh, needed to build our way into the game. We didn't, we wasn't performing at our best, but I think all of them that came on uh, imposed themselves in the manner that we hoped. Again. Another really important period for Louis Dennis in terms of the way that he comes on and him showing the qualities that he's capable of. But I think Lee wins the flick that gets us the little move that, that gets Brof in for, for Ruel's goal. Um, and we end up, you know, obviously Jobs comes on and gives us that bit of stability once we change shape and took Cease off in the middle of the park. So, um, yeah, I think it's a great shout. Um, 
another one of Justin's quotes that lived with us for, for a long, long time. But that's why you bring those players on, whether it's to, to shut a game off or to change it, and, and to, bounce, to, to to change it and get a point. And of course, the man who served both Orient and Spurs with so much sort of integrity and passion. And of course, it's Spurs here on Tuesday night. Was it difficult? get the players focused on the league today? Uh, it wasn't, I, I don't think it was and um, you know I, I think there, there might be people saying well you know we didn't have a great game with our eyes elsewhere maybe um, until I speak to the players about that individually I don't think that's the case yesterday there was a, almost an unofficial ban on, on talking about the Tottenham game because it was irrelevant um, I don't know if I said it in, in, in Tuesday's night, Tuesday night's press but beating Plymouth for me was a massive massive thing for, for me for the players and the team because they were our landmark last year. They, for me, were the real team that I felt were at their, were the best that we came up against. So I was delighted that we got over that hurdle with that end goal, but also to beat Plymouth. Um, and I wanted it, this was my priority. This is, you know, we'd won one game in the league. As great as the season feels and the start to it has been, we'd only won one game in the league. So it was about coming here and, and putting in a performance. We've come away with it from point, um, and I think that shows the resilience in the group. So I'm extremely proud that the boys have shown that today without performing to the levels that we don't. Now we can go and enjoy the experience. Now we can fully focus on, I'll go and watch Tottenham against Southampton tomorrow. I don't know how many of the players I'll see. Um, but now we can really start to turn our, our, our eyes towards uh, what's going to be a really exciting opportunity for us. Five games in the 11 days. They were in southern Bulgaria last Thursday. I think they're in Macedonia this Thursday. How, how difficult is it to even predict what Jose Mourinho will be thinking about choosing them? I don't know if anyone can predict. If I can predict what Jose Mourinho <laughs> thinks, I might be onto something. Um, yeah, it's tough and there's loads of different angles. You know, you look at some of the under 23s players that might get exposure. You know, the fact that the, 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 the incredible management career that the man has had, um, he will normally sets his store out to win competitions like this one that we're coming up against him, against him in. So, um, fully respect it. Uh, we'll be looking, preparing, trying to find every angle that we possibly can to analyse what Spurs might look like. But at the same time, it's about putting every energy into making sure that there's a Leighton Orient team uh, ready to go out and uh, put in the best performance that we can for Tuesday night and then we can dream after that coming. And it's on TV and it's a timely and important financial boost. I think so. Um, I, I, I think I said to you after the Forest Green game that I had no shame in admitting, and I'm sure Nigel wouldn't, that the club wanted a cup run this year. Um, and we've done that. We've, um, we've come into this competition, we've given it everything. Um, I know there was a few question marks about the fact that I made so many changes on Tuesday night, but that shows you again the faith that I have in the players and the squad. So um, it's, it's incredible, gives a great club a real boost. And I'm sure um, we'll all enjoy Tuesday night. And, and, and then, like I say, we'll see what comes out of it. We're looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thanks Ross. very much.